Hi, welcome to another video. So, Klein has got some new upgrades that I wanted to talk about. And I also wanted to talk about some of the new MCP servers and some more free APIs that I also found these days. Anyway, let's have a look at the updates. So, after the last video I did, in which I covered the Klein provider option, which was kind of cool, there has been one major upgrade. So, this update added a new option to display selectable options when asking questions or presenting a plan, saving you from having to type out responses. What this means is that Klein can now give you multiple choice answers with each question. This is helpful with things that just need a yes or no option or need color options that Klein can suggest or library options and stuff like that, which is kind of great to see. Another option is that it added support for a Klein rules folder. This is great because previously you could only add one Klein rules file and use that. However, you couldn't use multiple files to define rules in different segments and stuff like that. So, now what you can do is that you can just create a Klein rules directory and then create multiple markdown files in it. And Klein will treat all those files as one rule, which is kind of amazing as well. You can also prevent Klein from reading extremely large files into context that would overload the context window. So, this is great to save some money on the token costs, as well as get better results, because sometimes you only need to use a file as context for one request and don't want to overflow the context with it. So, this is great for that. It also has improved checkpoints, loading performance, and displays warnings for large projects not suited for checkpoints, which is awesome because it allows you to know with which projects Klein will work fine or not. So, that's super great. There's also a new Samba Nova API provider, which is kind of awesome as you don't need to mess around with the OpenAI-compatible API provider anymore, which is kind of awesome. There are also some upgrades to the AWS Bedrock option. So, if you use that, then it's great as well. Now, one thing that I wanted to focus on is that if you use the Klein provider that was added in the last update, then it may cost you more, as reported by many users. This is because of the fallback providers of open router that they use in the back end. In fallback providers, the request is routed to another provider of the model in order to fulfill the request if the main provider is not available. And this in most cases just breaks the cache, which results in more cost. So if you're experiencing it, then you can just use the official Anthropic API if you wish to use it. So, there's that. Now let me show you these things in action and how you can use it, along with some of the new MCP servers and APIs that I've been using. But, before we do that, I want to take a quick break to tell you about Dart AI, which is something that's been a game changer for my workflow lately. It's an AI-powered project management tool that's honestly quite amazing. You can generate entire project plans from a simple prompt, detect duplicate tasks automatically, create subtasks, and, this is the coolest part, you can actually assign tasks to the AI itself, and it will complete them for you. You can use it to generate blog posts, research topics, and even create thumbnails without having to do the work yourself. It's pretty insane how good it is. The best part? It's completely free for teams up to four people. If you need more, they have $8 and $12 plans with even more features. Dart also has some great integrations. You can connect it with GitHub to link issues and PRs, integrate with Slack and Discord for updates, and even use their API to build custom workflows. If you're working on projects of any kind, you should really give Dart a try. It's built from the ground up with AI in mind, and it shows in how seamlessly everything works. 
check out the link in the description to get started. It's free, so you've got nothing to lose. And trust me, it'll change how you manage your projects. Now, back to the video. First of all, head over to VS Code and make sure that you upgrade it to the latest version. Now just open up Klein, and now let me show you all the new features that it has. So first of all, let's start with the new selectable option. Now if you ask it for something that is doable as multiple options, then it will give you options like here, which is kind of great to see, as it makes simple multiple choice answers pretty easy to select without going through the hassle of typing. If you think that it doesn't have a correct answer, then you can always move away from it and just type in your prompt and send it in, which is also great as it is just another extra option. I would have liked an option to maybe turn this off, as this might take even more tokens. So, that would have been great to have. Anyway, next we have the Klein Rules folder. So, now what you can do is that you can just create a Klein Rules folder like this, and then inside that, you can add multiple rules files, which will be taken in context as rules when running Klein. I like it because you can make multiple rule files, like one for testing, one for front end, and stuff like that, which is great for most of the tasks I do. So, that's awesome. Another thing that you won't see as often is that now Klein will prevent itself from reading extremely large files into context that would overload the context window. This will come in handy in larger repos if you use Klein on that. So, this is great as well. One more thing is that if you go to Settings, then you'll now see native integration for Samba Nova here, which means that if you use Samba Nova, which I use almost regularly, then you can now directly enter your API key, enter the model, and use that which is great as well for most of the stuff. So, this is amazing as well. Apart from this, you'll also see improved checkpoints, loading performance and display warnings for large projects not suited for checkpoints. Now, for some of the new MCP servers that I have been using, one of them is the Figma one, which is great if you use Figma for your mockups. You can just make it fetch your designs, and then it can get that implemented, which is similar to Figma to code options that you generally see on the internet. Another one is the Firecrawl MCP, because it has added the Deep Research option, which allows you to make it research on topics that you may need. It's especially useful for making documentation on nice libraries for which it doesn't have context on how to use it. So, that's great, and I use it. Apart from this, for the free models, you always have the open router free models, QWQ is being provided by some providers for free, so you could use that. And there are also some even better models like R1 and V3, which you can also use if you wish to. Samba Nova is also great as they have some free credits, and it allows you to use models at super fast speeds with it, which is also awesome. That's majorly about the new updates. Klein has always been super simple to use, and these new quality of life updates is kind of great for most of the options that we generally have, and the new options like multi-choice is kind of awesome. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!